Hey everybody, I'm Zelda Master, and welcome back to The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. In this one, we're going to be making our way to the next temple within the game, and that is the Catfish's Maw. As you can tell by the map, it is lit up, letting us know that we must head there and explore this next area. But before I do that, there are a couple things I want to do. One thing is actually purchase the bow and arrow, as I've been wanting to do it for a while. But as you can tell, it's just too expensive. Pretty much the most expensive item in the game until... You see this, the chamber stone, which I believe is an optional thing that we don't really need to worry about at the moment. So, I'm going to save that for much later. For now, we're just going to aim on getting the bow and arrow. Now, uh, as you can see, I don't have enough rupees, but I did farm for rupees off screen. But I wanted to show myself getting the last bit of rupees on screen as uh, there is an area I completely forgot about. But thanks to someone in the comments, they mentioned how I forgot about this room in the color dungeon that holds just a bunch of rupees. So, we're going to go ahead and show that off and get it. But how I farm for rupees was pretty much I just did this. I ran in between these two sections of tall grass. And uh, as I ran between them, a bunch of rupees would pop out, and then I would just run up and then kind of rinse and repeat. As you can see, if I do this again, yes, all the grass continuously respawns, and uh, you can get yourself quite a bit of rupees in a very fast uh, period of time. But obviously there are other methods to do so, like, you know, actually play mini games and and try to win rupees, but if you want a easy, free method to do so, if you have the Pegasus Boots, it is a breeze. I used to use the, you know, tall grass within Mabe Village, like that giant patch to also farm for rupees, but, um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like this is a faster method, especially with the Pegasus Boots, and on top of the fact that the game just kind of respawns the grass as you walk across the screen. You don't have to like exit to a new area. But as you can tell in the color dungeon, I completely forgot about this room, which doesn't really take away from 100%ing this dungeon as it's an optional room that just holds rupees. That's why our compass doesn't really indicate to it. But make sure to buy some bombs because I do need some to explode this wall right here. You can tell it's cracked. And if we enter it, yes, so many blue rupees. It's actually really nice and the perfect amount to get myself the bow. We'll actually have way more than enough. As you can see, we hit over a thousand, which is awesome. And now I could purchase the bow and arrows. It's kind of interesting how you have to buy so many items within this game when, and you know, Zelda games after this, they've become key items that you only can get within dungeons. But in this game, if you manage to constantly farm, you can get so many valuable items super early within the game. Obviously, it's not that easy unless you steal, but uh, still, it's nice that you have the option. But okay, anyways, as you can hear, our Sea shell sensor is going off, and that's because I don't want to fall. Go ahead and dig here, Link. I can't pinpoint where I want to dig. There we go, and I'm gonna about to get hit. I'm gonna see if I can combat that with an attack. There we go. You deserve that. Um, but there is a piece of heart right here that I want to pick up as well within these spooky uh, lands, and um, yeah, okay, that's pretty much it here. So it's nice. I was able to heal up and now let's go ahead and leave. There is another seashell I want to quickly grab before we make our way back down and actually purchase the bow and arrow. But um, yeah, in this video, before I do make my way to the Catfish's Maw, I've been told that the upgrade that was originally for 30 or 20 seashells, which was pretty much the limit in the original game, is now held up to 30, as there are 40, I believe, in total. I'm excited to collect them all, so I believe in this video we'll be able to get at least 30 in total, as right now we're sitting on, what, 25? Because we just got two, yep. So we just need five more, and we can see what the next upgrade will be. I don't think it's going to be the upgrade I wanted, which was the sword upgrade, as that's supposed to be the final upgrade from the seashells, so it's, it might just be a piece of heart or something. We're going to figure out. Obviously, I, I, I don't know. So, uh, I'm excited to figure out, but Okay, let's just go ahead and avoid these enemies. Uh, I do believe there is one last thing I want to do I like how they show you all the icons of everything, but is there something else I want to get? We picked up the seashell by the sign. Yeah, I think we're good for now. Uh, we can leave this area I mean, I can always play Manbo's Mumbo and teleport if needed, so it's no big deal, and plus, Cola Island is pretty small, so you can really walk around it pretty fast. But, okay, I want to go ahead and now purchase this item. Eventually, we're going to get the chamber tablet thingy. Uh, I'm assuming it has something to do with Dompe, and, 
Yeah, I'm not entirely sure what it will do, but I don't remember it being in the original game, so it has to have something to do with Dompe. So I don't think they did, you know, lock an item like that to have you progress within the game. It seems a bit random, but okay. Anyways, with that done, now I want to go ahead and start making my way to the next area, which is the Catfish's Maw, but I'm going to walk there instead of teleporting and- Ah, uh, it is so satisfying to do this. I want to go back and grab those rupees, but I'm not going to do so, as we wasted enough time doing that. So, okay, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of run across here. I feel like there could have been a faster method, but screw it. We can easily dash, as there is another seashell I need to pick up, which is on your way to Key Cavern, as once you do get the flippers, we can now swim over here because you couldn't long jump over. The Pegasus boots weren't good enough. So now we managed to get this one. And uh, I believe, since we are pretty close to Animal Village, we may as well head there as well because there are a couple more, uh, what's it called, seashells I can grab from there. So we're actually going to round up as many seashells within the map of Kohola before we consider taking on this next dungeon. So, I'm just gonna go ahead and make my way down here. <laughs> so it was cute to hear those enemies spit the, the item, but okay. I guess I have to do this. I could have just teleported, really, to the uh, area, but I think this will be just as fast. Okay, never mind, unless a shark stops me. There we go. We managed to get across. I just kind of want to walk all around because, well, you know, teleporting is pretty useful. I'm not gonna lie, the map is just so short, so uh, it's pretty easy to get across. And there is one thing I wanted to do. We can hear Marin, which is nice, but... Oh wow, she's here as well, uh, Grandma Yahoo, which is interesting, as we've given her the broom. And speaking of the broom and overall trading sequence, uh, once you do get the letter from Christine, the goatfish, who is pretending to be Princess Peach, uh, you actually want to head back to her, and when she knows that you know, Mr. Wright got the letter. I'm not kidding when I say this, it means a lot to me. I want you to have this seashell as thanks. Yes, we get a secret seashell. It's funny how the um, indicator, like the sensor, let us know that there was a seashell in here, but you have to speak to her to get it. So it's not necessarily as easy as it may seem or just somewhere around here, but oh yeah. It's always nice to just hear Marin sing, but I'm gonna ignore that for now. And speaking of actually Marin singing, the walrus down here wants to hear Marin sing as well. As you can hear, our seashell is going off. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and take out, whoops, wrong song. Take out my ocarina, but have Marin's song equipped. And yeah, let's give him a little song with the ocarina. And well, oh wait, it didn't listen to us. There we go. Okay, so you have to stand in the exact point. A bit tricky, but okay, yeah, you notice his Marin. Wait, it's Link. Well, you know what? You can have this instead. <laughs> okay, thanks. All right. So, yeah, that's like a, a new one. I don't believe this was in the original game, so that's one we have to get as well. Um, I think there is another one that I kind of didn't really think too much about, and that is over here. Usually by these owl statues, there's... Uh, one that you want to dig for and as you can see by our sensor it's also going off so let's go ahead and take out our shovel and boom another seashell pretty easy but um, with that done I think I'm actually gonna use Mambo's Mumbo and uh, it's time to teleport because we're pretty far from where I want to head to now and that is uh, at least around May Village as we're, you know, at Animal Village, and that will take a while. I already walked from May Village to Animal Village. I don't need to do that twice in one episode, so let's go ahead and just teleport like this. And now, um, in Yukuku Prairie, we're just going to go ahead and head west, back to May Village, and then make our way south, because I do want to actually head to the shores, as there is another secret seashell. I pretty much uh, just kind of spent the last uh, episode or in between the last episode and this episode walking all around Kohola Island and figuring out all the other seashells while collecting rupees of course as I don't really want to spoil the game for myself and beat the game off screen but I managed to find a lot of areas that I can pinpoint where the secret seashells are so we're literally one away from our upgrade and I'm not entirely sure exactly where but it should be somewhere here or you know what let's not dig let's what? Really? Huh. How about this one? 
There we go. Okay, well that's that's my fault for choosing to walk around the game's map and not figure out how to collect the seashell. I would just see the sensor go off and I'm like, okay, well I know to visit that area next time I record. And I mean, it worked out for the best, but it took me a while to actually figure out how to get it. Because yes, that's my first time ever getting the seashell. Like I've said before, this is my first playthrough uh, and it's blind. I feel like that's a new one. And even if it isn't, uh, I've totally forgot about it from the original game. I, at this point, can't differentiate which ones are new and which ones aren't. So, yeah. But at least now we are at 30. So, I think it's time to take, take a quick visit to the secret seashell shrine and see what reward we get. And I'm going to eat some apples on the way because I just can't help it. Let's, uh, let's sit and enjoy Link enjoying an apple. Okay, and, and almost getting attacked by scissor enemies that are the most annoying within the game because it's you can't just like easily kill them um but okay can avoid these guys do i have my bow by the way did i buy it? i did i kind of want to put this to use you know ah, there we go it's actually really helpful against enemies that choose to fly away from you or are far away. I think it's actually going to be ha really helpful in the catfish's maw, but I don't think it's actually necessary. I just want to get it because I want to put it to you. So, oh yeah, we're just going to chuck a bunch of arrows at these enemies because they chuck stuff at us. Well, here, chuck something back. <laughs> so satisfying, especially since it kills them in one hit. But okay, so you can hear some weird sound effect when you come near the shrine. I just noticed that, but whatever. Let's just jump. And fill it up. Come on, fill her up. Let's see what reward it is. I mean, it's going to reach the seashell perfectly. Okay. And this will be... Oh, I'm excited. I know it's not going to be the sword upgrade that was in the original game. It's going to be a chamber stone. Um, great. So, what do I do with these anyways? Gives me an eerie feeling. I can buy one too. I don't want this crap. I'm pretty sure it's for Dompe, and I'm not going to do the Dompe stuff until later. Um, I'm still waiting on actually getting a, uh, you know, Link Amiibo from the game, which is, you know, this, this game is Link Amiibo because you get something very exclusive. I have every other Zelda Amiibo, but sadly that's the one Amiibo I happen to be missing, but it's because I didn't manage to pre-order in time. But okay, now it's time to speak to this mermaid, as we haven't gotten a chance to do so. And come on! Zora, leave me alone, please. Okay, let's go and speak to her. So, when I was swimming in the bay, the waves took a very important necklace from around my neck. If you find it, I will let you take a skill from my tail. Okay, sounds a bit interesting. And uh, you know, I want a scale from your tail, so let's go ahead and do it. So yeah, that's our goal here. But uh, before I look for it, I do believe, let's just dive past this Zora, because I'm just not trying to mess with it. Uh, this is actually where we want to go. So actually, let's just do this first. So yeah, this bridge here, uh, you can actually swim underneath it, and I can't wait to see the transition and how it looks. Oh, wow, it looks so good in this game. I mean, it looked good in the original game. I love seeing the 2D sections even in the original game. But yeah, so there's a fisherman. I can't tell if this is the same one from Koholan, just he moves where you move. I, I doubt it. I don't know. Either way, this fisherman is busy, and this is actually a part of the trading sequence. So what do you got in your hand? Yes, it's a fishing hook. This is a fishing hook that you get from trading in the broom to Grandma Yahoo, which we've seen at Animal Village. So now let's go ahead and let him put it to work. And well, okay, that's a big one. And what is it? It's just a necklace. Yes, it's the mermaid's necklace. So we're lucky. Not bad. Now I'm just going to go ahead and leave him because screw fishing. This guy can waste his time fishing. Speaking of fishing, there's actually two pieces of heart from fishing. I don't know why, and I don't want to do it, but I have to now. So, yeah, we're going to eventually dedicate some time to fishing. I mean, I might as well do that soon, uh, if anything. But there's one last thing I want to do. Obviously, I want to give the mermaid her uh, thing. We need a scale, obviously, to enter the catfish's maw. So you, you need to give the mermaid back her necklace to get this scale. So let's go ahead and speak to her. And, uh, that's it. That's my ne necklace. Give it to me. Give it back. I'll give you a skill, as I said. Okay, yeah, I get it. That was the plan. Chill. So Link just kind of ducks down underwater. He dives and promise you'll only take one. 
Captain's a bit dirty, but okay. <laughs> there we go. We got ourselves a scale from the mermaid's tail. So how will you use this? We're going to figure out. And she just decides to swim off. I don't blame her. You know, that's... It was a bit awkward, but okay. So, with that done, uh, we can now enter the catfish's maw, but I don't want to do that yet. As like I mentioned, there is something else I want to get. Speaking of mermaid, right by the mermaid statue, there is a piece of heart that we can easily grab. And um, I guess now that we are ready to enter the catfish's maw, all you need to do is dive here. Might as well show it off. But again, since this is all about swimming, Fishes, mermaids, all of that jazz. I may as well dedicate the rest of this video to getting those pieces of heart. Because all you need to do is just swim around here and, and everything will come to plan. Don't worry. This this is like one of the few temples where it's not necessarily a key that you needed to open it up. As the other temples you did, as you can see. But we're still going to need keys within temples. This one is just a bit different uh, in how it works. But uh, the scale is what we're going <laughs> to really utilize here. In general... I'm just going to go ahead and use this mini teleporter as you can teleport to other areas within the game. No, just these mini teleporters are kind of useless as they take you to big teleporters. So in reality, these don't do much. I thought with these teleporters, you could teleport to other mini ones, which uh, there are more of those in the game, it seems. But I guess not. I think these mini ones are new within the game. The big ones, obviously, with Manbo's Mambo has always been within the game, but... Yeah, anyways, uh, let's go ahead and go back. So, the first, like, the early episodes I had to fish for, uh, I believe my first piece of heart? Or was it my second? So, it was a piece of heart in general, and now I realize there's another piece of heart you have to get within this. But what really made me hate this mini game was the bottle having to get it. But from what I've been told, there are literally two pieces of heart you can get from this. So, yeah, let's go ahead and do it. Um, I believe I did get my first piece already, so from the big one. So I don't think I have to do the big one again. I think I just have to do this one. So just let this guy come. Let's let this guy come. It'll be easier. I'm impatient as all heck, so again, let's just kind of see if we get lucky. Watch me not get lucky on the small fish. So come on, you want this. You know you want this. Go for it. Okay. Perfect. Took two seconds. Maybe because it's a heavyweight lore or a medium weight or whatever. So it's just a fish, a small one, plenty of flight. Come on. Uh, yes, okay. I guess you do get it. Nice. And screw, screw that. Now I guess I'm done. I don't want to keep going. Nah. Okay. So we did get the two pieces of heart. We got the bottle. I think that's all there is to get from this. So, I could put it to rest for now. But, now let's go ahead and use Manbo's Mumbo. I like how literally it's like I only have one item slot because I have to have Rock's uh, Feather always out. Uh, it's cool that you can actually teleport to Dompe Shack. That makes it pretty convenient. But, that's not what I want to do. I actually want to teleport over here. Um, because, the reason why is... We need to get ourselves another seashell. And I feel like the easiest way to get it is to take the waterfall, waterfall pathway that takes you around the castle moat. And this is like a nice shortcut of sorts that actually holds something underneath it um, that we'll be able to figure out, especially with our sensors. So I just got to pass, you know, Manbo's uh, cave of sorts and obviously the previous temple, which... It's kind of nice that there are two water temples back to back. Like one water temple introduces you to the water. The other one's a full on water temple. But I believe if I fall down here, yep, it goes off as there is another secret seashell. But okay, now we swim quite a bit. We've collected everything I want to say we need to collect. And I think we're now good to make our way to the catfish's maw. I feel like we have plenty of stuff. And rounding up um, items within this game seems to be pretty quick. I thought it was going to be like a hassle having to get everything that we didn't obtain, but it's been pretty nice so far. But okay, can I just walk there? How close am I? Eh, I'm pretty close. I can just teleport to Animal Village. No, let's just walk. Like, for real, I feel like teleporting, like, it saves time, but it's not that much. Again, it's just so fast to kind of progress on foot as this map is just 
so small. So this will actually take us to where we want to go, I believe. I believe the whole river connects. Ah, come on. I hoping I wouldn't get hit there. But yeah, the whole river should connect. So if I just kind of go down here, I'll eventually reach my destination. And Okay. I love Zora, but I hate them in these older Zelda titles because they look dumb and they, they suck. But hey, the mermaid's back. Can I speak to her? An artist once told me to pose for him, and he wanted a scale too. Can the legend of the magnifying lens be true? Now, this is kind of foreshadowing something we're going to see later, but... Um, yeah, anyways, cool, Mermaid. <laughs> that's, that's interesting to know. I'm just going to ignore her for now. So, let's go ahead and dive once again. And as you can see, within this 2D section, it will just get you through the small area that takes you uh, in front of the temple. And I actually never got to swim fast underwater. This is pretty nice. Though the background looks very pixelated, it's not as detailed as the foreground, which I'm not complaining, but I don't know. I feel like Nintendo could have put more. You know, I, I, I'll chill. Who cares? It, the game looks freaking amazing for how it is, so I'm not, I'm not necessarily complaining. But anyways, there we go. We made it. We are at Martha's Bay in the middle of where the catfish's maw holds. So, anyways, that does it for this episode of The Legend of Zelda: Link's Awakening. Next time, we're gonna be taking on this temple and. Uh, yeah, see what awaits. So, be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed. As always, I've been Zelda Master, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!